He ruins her job, her career. He runs career. her out of business. He runs her out of business. <laughs> Doesn't matter in the end, because guess what? She's now, you know, gonna marry Mr. Fox. Okay, she's actually just gonna be a rich, wealthy wife. So who gives a it shit about her out. mom's bookshop? Yeah. You gotta crack some eggs to make an omelet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 we are together again with the one and only Joe Peacock. We have somehow coerced him to record with us. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he got so lucky. Today we have come to the table to commiserate, to discuss why rom-coms have ruined all of us and who better to, you know, discuss this with than Joe Peacock. So welcome. Thank you for dragging me back. I feel like... (laughs) This is a support group, honestly, a support group I've needed and mm-hmm. wanted mm-hmm. and have finally found because I genuinely feel like I've been ruined by rom-coms. <laughs> Wait, no, I truly, when I was preparing for this gorgeous episode, I was like discovering how much of my issues are actually just me entirely. And all of my maybe romantic problems are based on the fact that I have completely unrealistic expectations set for me by Shonda Rhimes, Mm -hmm. by the writers of these rom-coms who truly have ruined our expectations of what the men or women in our life will do for us. Today is a a deconstruction. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give us all permission to to weep, to wail, whatever it, you know, it's going to take for us to really get to the bottom of this and just sit with it. You know, it's okay. Let's hold space for each other. Yeah, please. I will say I'm coming at it from a place. I'm not ready to give up some of these expectations. Okay, really? I would just like to process my anger that they're not. (laughs) I was I was taught that a world would be waiting for me that I don't think has come to fruition, Mm -hmm. but I'm still holding out hope. So I'm not ready to kind of like give it up. yet. You're not in a place to deconstruct, actually. No, no. no. (laughs) (laughs) I like the world I'm living in, I guess. (laughs) Wow. How fragile. Uh, Where do we even begin? Where should we start? I can just start with one. Yeah. Okay, you don't mind. Yeah. So this is actually not even like romantically related. This is actually more economical. Okay. One of the biggest misconceptions, unrealistic expectations that rom-coms gave me was that my life would inevitably include being in my like mid to late 20s, having a very glossy, easy job at an art gallery. Yeah. yeah. And living in a $20 million apartment. Yes. Yes. Like nothing. Like nothing. I think let's hit on the glossy job, Mm -hmm. the glossy, easy job. Right. All of the jobs that we see in rom-coms are, I don't know anybody in those actual jobs. (laughs) A hundred percent. Because the main challenge of those jobs is like, my boss needs me to work this night when I also have a date. (laughs) That's just a calendar issue. Literally. You know? (laughs) They don't exist. They aren't real. Well, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's always like the woman always works at an art gallery or the woman always is a baker, mm. a flower shop oh, yeah, owner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She works in a store you would find on Main Street. Right. Main Street. <laughs> I mean, like this downtown Disney. Like, like Main, Main Street. Street. <laughs> the women only work on Main the, Street. The women are like Belle. From, like, <laughs> exactly. And the men are like the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> yes, ex- precisely. <laughs> uh, which also, I think, like sets up some unrealistic expectations when you think, of course, just one day I'll become, you know, a pastry chef. Yeah. Yeah. Or a florist. Right. And then also have a, a penthouse. gorgeous life. I mean, if we literally look at it ends with us. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I actually did did not even prepare to necessarily like talk about that movie, but that is what came to mind and it is it's ringing true to me in this moment. Because mm-hmm. she's a florist who hates flowers. So it's like <laughs> punk rock. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a florist who has like a very expensive floral shop, okay, which ostensibly has done like no sales. She's in designer clothes. Yes, 100%. yes. It doesn't look like she has to really get to the flower shop that early. She's <laughs> able to like pay one employee like to have a job, which is like pretty crazy to me. You know, the rent is very expensive there. And let us remember in that movie, the only flowers that were purchased twice were for her. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to get to the clincher. I mean, I hope I'm not stealing anyone's, but I feel like it just dovetails so perfectly with It Ends With Us, which is not, I guess, a rom-com. But I would just put this all under, like, the romantic umbrella of films. But it's that a guy with a very high-powered job or a very serious, impressive job Mm -hmm. who also could moonlight as a Calvin Klein model will beg you to commit to him, will just chase you, in spite of your protests, in spite of your disinterest, mm-hmm. he will just hunt you down. 
I could not agree with you more. I thought I would be dating a lot more men than guys. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I've met so many more baristas and realtors <laughs> than I have architects or journalists. And to your point, Lauren, like I thought I would meet a man who had a perfect job, mm -hmm. a beautiful apartment, and no inner life, who would just was like walking around with a perfect hole, the shape of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And that, I feel like Matthew McConaughey and How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, like mm -hmm. all these guys that are just like, to your point, beautiful, successful, and they are pursuing you. Relentlessly. Relentlessly. And, and they somehow they, they find the time to relentlessly pursue you. They find joy oh, in yes. relentlessly pursuing yes. you. It's, it's fun for them. I think like, that, that brings me to one of my points, something that I feel like mom even said to us, mom even reinforced, Deb, was that men will go to the ends of the earth. Right. M men won't. I'm sorry. They, they just won't. They um, will barely, like, go get the door. We'll buzz you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Honestly, I just remember one time when I was dating, thinking that when a guy called me an Uber home, like, I didn't have to pay for my own Uber home. It was, like, so hot. You know, I was like really being treated so well, but you're so right, Chan. Like this is also an issue with our childhood. Our mom specifically taught us these lessons that yeah. when a man loves a woman, you know, he will come for you. He will hunt you down. You're the prey. He's the hunter. We have a lot to unpack. We have a lot to deconstruct that, yeah, might, might be from Deb. Deconstructing Deb, that could be a whole mm -hmm. episode. Yes. And I think with these rom-coms too, so often like they start off as enemies and then the script mm -hmm. flips. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite rom-coms does that we may need to spend an hour talking about it, but Runaway Bride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's please. And for our viewers who don't know what the premise of that movie is, it's Richard Gere, Julia Roberts, mm -hmm. their second outing. The premise of that movie, you know how they met, Chan? I do. Richard Gere pens what we would call today a hateful think piece. Mm -hmm. Hit piece. Hey, yeah, hit piece on Julia Roberts, uh, how she runs away from relationships. <laughs> Even telling you that right now, the legs on my hair are standing. <laughs> That's how radicalized I've been from that movie. Like if I got wind that a gay man was writing a hateful piece on me, oh, I know he'd be down bad. There is, that movie taught me there is nothing hotter than a man who writes words about you. Mm. And they will be writing words oh. about you. you and you will USA them. Today print edition, the real estate in that, oh. Incredible. Uh, if a man showed up to my little town outside of Salt Lake City to profile me in a negative light, <laughs> the way I would immediately turn off all the lights, I would sit myself down and be seated for that interview because I know what would happen <laughs> yeah. next. Oh. The greatest love story. You know the way this story ends. Thank well, you. first of all, he's going to be in a stunning like corduroy or um, suede jacket. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's going to have a sensible corduroy pant on, a brown loafer, a pencil in his ear. You know, because he's a he's, he reads books. Okay, he's right. He has a beautiful apartment. And again, he is just fascinated, obsessed with you. He just can't help but fall deeply in love with you. Let me talk to you about that movie because the trailer for me is basically <sighs> like porn. It's my pornography. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When he says, I mean, this line has just caused so many, so much internal problems for me. But when he says, you want a man who just will wake you up in the middle of the night, okay? Just dying to hear what you have to say. Wake you up at dawn. Just you know, bursting to hear what you have to say. I mean, no man has ever woke me up so I could speak more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's not my reality, okay? In my marriage, that's not how things go. I think on some level, the men in my life have heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. I think that's, that's another tale that is spun to us that just like the men that, uh, you know, are going to step into our lives and fall in love with us are going to just literally be waiting breathlessly for mm -hmm. every thought that pops into our head. It's not true. Not true. Not true. Well, also that movie, again, like things start off on the wrong foot. He's mm -hmm. really rude to her. And I feel like I bring that into my own life where I'm like, I know how it started, but I can feel the script <laughs> about to turn. Mm -hmm. And I blame Gary Marshall for that. Like, he messed me up. Wait, who's Gary Marshall? Sorry. He directed Pretty Woman and oh, Runaway Bride. Mm, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. And Princess Diaries. I'm like Richard Gere. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think, okay, so I think we could just spend a moment talking about Richard Gere as a figure, you know, as he's in yeah. Pretty Woman. And he's also on Runaway Bride, so I think that he's a character we should spend some time with. Let's talk about the hair on Richard Gere. Mm, so Let's Rich talk about the way he's aging, the way he's <laughs> aged in that movie. I don't know if he's 65 or 32, but either way, he's so hot. He is looking so good. So good. Yeah. The way he talks, too. <gasps> oh, just Yeah, it lingers on words. <sighs> yeah. When he helps her drunk father into the car. Oh, oh. oh my god. And, like, so even the scene where he's, like, with his ex-wife. 
Yes. And what did I do? Did I not really see you? <laughs> I'm sorry, but what ex-husband is having those types of like contrite conversations with their ex-wives? Yes. I don't know. It's not happening. Also, what guy with a full head of hair like that, with a great career, with a dazzling mind, is like, you know what I want? I want to date someone who works in a little town at a hardware store outside the city. <laughs> like, yes, no, completely. There's no like logistics talk. Mm -hmm. There's no like, this is how we're going to have to make this relationship work. It's just like, we're meant to be together. So I, I have a terrace apartment in New York <laughs> City, but I literally am going to make it work with you, you know, this, you as you run your hardware store. Yeah, unfortunately, I think the men who look like Richard Gere and have dazzling careers at newspapers don't necessarily need to import women, okay? Mm -mm. They don't need to look outside the <laughs> 0.2 mile radius of their home. <laughs> that movie's the best of both worlds because the cosmopolitan New York City and just yes. the quaintness of like, I don't know, Vermont. Maryland. Town. Maryland. Yeah. Yeah, Hail Maryland. That's right. Oh, it's so good. And it's I just so want to say, given my earlier comments about men's careers, I don't want to sound elitist because the Lord knows that I would drop everything for a man in coveralls. Like, <laughs> yeah. immediately. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Julia Roberts is so stunning, so she could look amazing in a sack. But this is another thing that I think is kind of funny about rom-coms is a lot of times you'll see the girl and she'll just have, like, the weirdest style that's, like, so off-putting you know her style in that is like coveralls yeah is like cargo pants yes. she always looks like she's like you know might be painting someone's home yes okay and again the men their eyes just light up right. they don't need a tit in sight no absolutely and i think too i something that struck me while i was watching her hair she can go from having her hair back in a bun to then down and curl oh my gosh and both look like perfection no no i'm so sorry when she pulls up in the car and walks up like the fire escape yeah. to her apartment. In Pretty Woman. In Pretty Woman. Yeah. She has her hair up and then she sees him coming and she just goes, oh, she takes out, you know, the little pin and it's a full blowout. That's not how hair works. No volume <laughs> has been lost. No. There's no need for dry shampoo. There, it, She doesn't need to get the to, kink out from where the pin was it, holding nothing, it in place. Nothing. Nothing. And yeah, I, well, I do think that's how Julia Roberts works. I don't know a lot about women's hair, but I, I, you know what? That, that's that's a gay man's fantasy. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did read somewhere that uh, when gay men are born, they are assigned one actress to protect and just like mm. with all their, their their life. And Julia Roberts mm. is mine. I was assigned to at birth. I totally agree. I, I mean, I'm right there with you. She, she can do no wrong. If she were to get canceled for me, I think that would rock me. She Big time. Like, yeah. like, you could tell me she dragged a body through the street. And <laughs> I, I'd be like, that's my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> Show some respect. No, yeah. Chandler and I feel like are ardent defenders of fidelity in marriage, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have a, a, a few people, though, who have broken that rule, and we look the other way. We look uh, the other way. And one way. of that includes Julia and what she did to Vera. We just don't talk about don't it on this podcast. Danny Motor was meant for her. He got tangled <laughs> up with someone else. I'm sorry. It's, sorry, Vera got in the way of fate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on her. Okay, my next one is... The idea that sleeping naked is totally great. Oh, oh my gosh. I will expand upon this. Not only sleeping butt naked, you know, both of you together, yeah. but you will fall asleep every night in each other's arms. It, on top of each other, essentially. Completely naked. Oh my gosh. I wish I had thought of this one because it's so good and it's <laughs> so true. I remember when I was first, sorry mom and dad, but dating. And I had a certain expectation that every night, you would fall asleep in each other's arms. Mm -hmm, you know, the mm -hmm. like if a camera was there above, yes. okay, if the drone was above you, it would show you just ensconced in each other's, wrapped in yes. each other's arms. Ra yeah, wrapped up in each other. And I just remember like my first overnight boyfriend being like, all right, well, that, that, was, fun, that was fun, but it's time for us to take our separate spaces. <laughs> and feeling so rejected. It moment. is kind of a rejection yes. moment. Absolutely. It is, but even if I can, like, feel another person in bed, that's hell to me. Like, I cannot fall asleep. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. And it's sweaty. To me, yeah, it is sweatier yeah. to be naked. Mm -hmm. I get it's anyway. also not hygienic to be naked, but it's you know, how we were meant to be. I guess. Mm. I don't know. No, that is that is such a good one. Can I tell you what I found in my couch the other day? I don't know. Please. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I don't know if I'm prepared for the answer, but please. A can of clear protein by Clean Simple Eats. Oh, my Eats. gosh. <laughs> It was Full literally or, behind our drink. It was a brand new can. That is how much Clean Simple Eats Clear Protein is a part <laughs> of my life. It's literally in my furniture. I just have it with me at all times. Okay, I find it in coat pockets. Lauren's literally like, just in case I can't leave my sectional today, I need to have sustenance. 
<laughs> well, also, by the way, I door dashed it to Courtney's house when she was staying with me. Then I ordered it. I had it shipped when I was going to be staying with her a few weeks later. I got to her home. I looked in the fridge. Lo and behold, there was already ample, clean, simple eats, clear protein inside. And she goes, let's not make too big of a dent in that this time, okay? <laughs> Honestly, Courtney is turned on to this. She is hooked. We are hooked. The clear hooked. protein it is so good. It tastes like a juice. It just tastes like a light, refreshing beverage. You don't have to get your kitchen messy. It's the best way to get in grass-fed, clean protein in a convenient way. It's a genius product, everyone. Go to cleansimpleeats.com. Use our code POPAPOLOGIST for 10% off. That's cleansimpleeats.com. Use the code POPAPOLOGIST for 10% off. Um, Have you two seen One Fine Day with George Clooney and Michelle Pfeiffer? I have not. Unfortunately, no, but it sounds incredible. Okay, it's a lesser known one. The premise is they almost have like a Freaky Friday moment where they're both single parents and they share a cab on their way to their kid's school and they kind of hate each other, but they accidentally swap cell phones. And so for the rest of the day, they're relaying each other messages like so-and-so call, but they're also like, hey, I'm having trouble like with picking up the kids. Can you cover them at this point? Mm. And, and it's one fine day in New York City and they fall in love and it's glamorous and sexy. And to your point earlier, I thought my 20s would be a lot more similar to that. Mm -hmm. Like I thought on the weekend I'd be so exhausted from falling in love <laughs> during the week that I need, need to recover. Yeah. Uh -huh. And in reality, most of my 20s were spent like trying to hide the fact that I'd just been to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I just, yeah. I, like, it's just that like, oh, what your 20s might be like to what they actually What they were. actually yeah. are. Yeah. Well, and I, I think as well, this idea that I definitely had from rom-coms, which is that, I will have seven to eight incredibly eligible bachelors fall for me, mm -hmm. yes. propose to me, mm -hmm. and I, it will just be my hard decision to choose which of these amazing men is right for me. Yeah. And, yes. And that has not been the case. <laughs> no, and I, I kind of, you know, expanding upon that gorgeous matter, Chandler, the idea that when they do propose to you, it will be in this, not even talking about the moment of the proposal, but propose the idea of wanting to marry you. It will be in this like very stern speech mm -hmm. about how much they need you. I mean, can I just actually bring up an exhibit? Please? Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. She's got a, she's got a oh, visual aid. I've got some props. Oh, no. wow. <laughs> this is, is a voice memo. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Kagan said to me. No, I'm just kidding. This is, I think, a single scene from television that potentially ruined my life. Okay. Okay. Wow. I cannot wait to see what this is. I thought, let me just say, preface it. I thought men would talk like this. Like someday men would... All men would, that were, you know, I wanted, would look like this and talk like this. You can say anything to me. I want to marry you. I want to have kids with you. I want to build this house. I want to settle down. I want to die when I'm 110 years old in your arms. I don't want 48 uninterrupted hours. I want a lifetime. She's unsure. She's <sighs> unsure. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just so laughable. I agree. Romantic comedies taught us men knew how to use words, liked using them. <laughs> You've got mail, like. I thought online dating would be equivalent to men like sending me their own daily poetry just yeah. for me. Yeah. Musing about the cities and the seasons in which they live. Right. The men that message me have trouble completing sentences. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hate to say, like, I've been the recipient of more dick pics than love letters. Right, right. And it's just like Tom Hanks would never. Would never. It's so true. The fact that, you know, that we were told that, yeah, men know how to use words and enjoy using them. I think it's the enjoyment part that is also so critical here because I feel like, you know, I love Ben, my dear fiance, but I think I've had to also really uh, be prescriptive about the words that I like. Mm -hmm. And just <laughs> and the, the fact that I need words. Yeah. It's like having to have the, you know, what's your what are your love languages questions? Those don't happen in rom-coms, okay? Right, exactly. They just know mm -hmm. or they yeah. just do all of them. Having to explain how love languages work, okay, and that you might need these more words and what words exactly and on mm -hmm. what moments exactly. Yes. I mean, you never see the girl doing that in the rom-com. No, yeah. no. And you also never see the guy, going back to what you were saying, Joe, being like, 
You know what I think about fall leaves? I think they are so beautiful. The way that they reflect the seasons and the times of our life changing. <laughs> okay. It's just like the way Tom Hanks talks in that movie, men don't talk that way. Also, the way she talks, it is sometimes I'm like, oh, that's maybe some of the pygmy energy I had. Okay. When I was mm-hmm. dating, what rom coms taught me was like, you want to be the girl with a lot of like intellectual interests. Okay. <laughs> that dazzle whoever you're pursuing or who's pursuing you. In that movie, she says, I just love Pride and Prejudice. I get lost in the words. That's what, exactly what she I'm says sorry. to him. I'm sorry. That book was a slog. <laughs> <laughs> that movie? Great. But I'm, I, that book was a slog. She says, just read it. I know you'll love it. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> what straight man is going to love Pride and Prejudice? Mm-mm. I think also Pride and Prejudice, that movie, the Kira Knightley movie, oh, yeah. did also some damage as well. I mean, before we get to Pride and Prejudice, I still need to keep unpacking. You've got me. Oh, please, please, please. please. Because I think one of the other big issues with that movie is this man steals her dream, essentially. Okay. He ruins her job, her career. He runs her out of business. He runs her out of business, which, by the way, was her mother's bookshop. Destroys her livelihood and legacy. Yes. And exactly. And you know what she says to to him at one point? She says, you know, I'm nobody special. But that shop was. And my mother was special. And a lot of people thought she was very fine or something like that. And it's just very tearful. It's horrible. Anyway. I find it kind of sexy. I'll be honest. (laughs) A a man that makes it his business to run you out of business (laughs) so he can take care of you. That is a long game. I am like, I respect. (laughs) Well, that is the toxic patriarchal dynamic. Because it doesn't matter in the end. Because guess what? She's now, you know, going to marry Mr. Fox, okay? She's actually just going to be a rich, wealthy wife. So who gives a shit about her mom's bookshop? You got to crack some eggs to make an omelet. (laughs) (laughs) I just love in that movie when he, like, his speech to her is essentially, wow, could you imagine if we had met in a different way in life? I would have asked for your number, and I would have asked if you wanted to get movies and dinner for as long as we both shall live. And I'm still waiting to hear that from some people. Yeah, I'm like, so, yeah. In rom coms, men speak in vows. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, oh, that's such a good way to put it. That yes. is what, what we see, and that's what we expected. Mm-hmm. That's what we expect. So it becomes a dark reality when you suddenly need to introduce the idea of, that you would like vows at some point. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And the conversation it, ends in tears. <laughs> or replies. Vows, replies, like, <laughs> right. Fair Acknowledgement. Vows. Yeah. Replies at all. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so mm-hmm. true. Oh my gosh, there's so much to get into. Something that I think I would like both of your takes on. Because this isn't in every single rom-com, but it is in a lot. Basically, it's this idea that if your life is in shambles, men will be turned on by this big time. (laughs) (laughs) Say more. When does this happen? The more chaotic, you know, you're (laughs) more like on the fritz you are. Yeah. Like bigger aphrodisiac for Mm -hmm. a man. You know, like, yeah, get evicted and he'll get an erection. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have an, a specific example? <laughs> I just feel like, like, for example, like, even with Meredith Grey and Grey's Anatomy, where she's, mm. like, always, like, you know, just, like, in between, oh. like, kind of figuring out her own, like, emotional state. Like, it's just, like, it's okay. If you don't have anything figured out in your life, it's right. totally okay. In fact, it, it's just, like, the damsel in distress. Also, like, I just want to have sex with you. I'm completely emotionally unavailable. I just have vodka in my refrigerator, you know, and thongs on the floor. And he is just, can't get enough No, of that. exactly. Uh, I'm speaking to Christina. You yes, know, Christina yes, Yang yes. And yes. her character. Yeah. Maybe it's because men are inherently messy and they're attracted to mess. <laughs> no, I That's think so. That's where they'll feel comfortable. Because, you know, in some theology, they're like, you wouldn't feel comfortable in the highest degree of heaven because you aren't that way. Like, yes. Maybe they're just, they're comfortable around a mess because like they're messy. Mm. Was it yeah. like water seeks its own level or something like that? I don't oh know. What the like you, you can't drag a wet meal to hot corn oven, something like that. <laughs> 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 That's the one. Anyway, but do you guys agree? I think you're right. Just in reality that men are like, yeah, this broad is not looking for anything serious because her life is in shambles. Yes, like, yeah. I'm just looking to be a tornado through this, you know, sorority house. Like, totally. Know, so I totally. imagine is the. Yeah. Yeah. Oven. Yeah. What about the normalization? And I'm going to go to the notebook really quick. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go to the normalization that, you know, most of the time you hate each other. Okay? You can't stand each other. They do montages of the woman slapping the man. Okay? We got some cute light DV. Okay? But (laughs) they couldn't help that they're crazy about each other. (laughs) Well, when you're not slapping him, you're You're, getting getting slapped around yourself. (laughs) 
I'll leave it at that. Th- that is a dynamic that comes up a lot in pop culture and like romantic storytelling. Like even the Taylor Swift song, The Way I Loved You, she's, yes. she's with like this solid guy, but it's boring because she misses screaming and fighting and kissing in the rain. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And that, I think that's something we've talked about a lot on the podcast that like actually I think the best relationships and the most enduring relationships are not the ones with the high drama. No, exactly. And I think that it can almost be a little bit of like a jump scare as a woman when you date a guy who's just like nice to you in a really stable, normal way. Like he's not over the top obsessed with you at the beginning. It's just all very normal. And you're like, wait, what about the guys that treated me like shit? And I was on the edge of my seat all the time. You almost miss the roller coaster because you're like, this is just so smooth sailing and I'm not used to this and Hollywood did not teach me that this is what love is made out of just someone who's respectful it's so true and I think like love songs do that I mean Mm -hmm. I think that like you almost expect as a woman like a stalker level yes behavior a stalker level like personality disorder behavior from like a guy trying to like woo you yes I love the meme where they show the the guy and the girl and they're like kissing or like hugging or whatever I think it's like at a stadium, but anyway, it's like the guy who wants to give you everything and like Mm -hmm. will give you the world. And then it's like the thought bubble above her head. And it's like, but you can't stop thinking about the guy who treats you like total garbage or whatever it is. And that is just, it can be true of the female experience. Yeah. 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 I think it's hard because it is exciting when a man starts treating you really nicely only because he was like a few (laughs) seconds ago. Yeah. I think like that can be confused with like infatuation and the highs of love. Whereas to your point, when you're with a guy who's just like only wants to please you, mm-hmm. it's um, there's less highs and lows. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. 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 And it's almost like you want to like know the pain so that you can know the sweet. Like I don't know the people who talk about having like great makeup sex, you know. But I also think it's boring, like when George Clooney is on a Today Show and tells Hoda Kotb that him and his wife have only ever had two fights. I'm like, that sounds like the most boring relationship <sighs> in the world. They were probably about like I don't know, like human rights or something too. 100%. Like, come on. <laughs> Speaking of getting a little tiffs, I called Kagan on the way to this because I was like, I wanted to know if he remembered this time in Paris where I behaved badly, I think based on an idea rom-coms gave me, Mm -hmm. which is that if I was a little bit upset or annoyed, I should just disappear into the city and make him come find me and chase me. (laughs) And he would love the experience of finding you. He would love this experience. Mm -hmm. He loves Mm -hmm. me so much. He will run after me. Right, right. And he says we got into a little tiff because I said I didn't approve that he liked Elon Musk. And I just turned around and walked away. And I thought he would ardently run after me and profess his love and, you know, that he had changed his ways about Elon. Well, lo and behold, he was just like, all right, see you later. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like a you problem. (laughs) Let me know when you've uh, come back to Earth. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Lauren, let's rewind the tapes to Tuesday, November 5th. Tensions were running high. Let's just say that night was a nail biter for a lot of people. (laughs) People on all sides. And I decided that around 9 p.m. that night, East Coast time, I wasn't interested in looking at any more news sites. I was just interested in taking an early bird and just retreating into the comfort of my mind off of my phone and off of the TV. And let me just tell you, It was very helpful. Early bird CBD gummies, they take the edge off your brain. It's the only way to describe it. For me, when I wake up in the middle of the night for a little anxiety, I take half an early bird and my brain, it just kind of melts away and I can go right back to sleep and slumber through the rest of the night. Everyone, it works on thoughts like, is the future of democracy over? And also thoughts like, will boar's head turkey ever come back into our life? You know, not as a listeria threat. A big one for you. You love huge. a good sliced meat. Two huge problems I'm currently facing. Anyway, and Early Bird's there for it all. No, I, I really can't overstate how incredible it is. Everyone, go to earlybirdcbd.com. Use code POP20 for 20% off. This is a very big discount. Earlybirdcbd.com. Use code POP20 at checkout. Oh, my gosh. What else, you guys? A hallmark of these romantic comedies is there's always, like, a meet cute. Mm, like yeah. Whether it's like J Lo getting her Gucci shoes stuck in the street and Matthew McConaughey coming to save her, or like you know both people reaching for a produce at Trader mm-hmm, Joe's, mm-hmm. and I, it just has made me perpetually on guard for a yes. meet cute. Yes, Joe. I can't afford to look sloppy at the store. I'm always anxious, but also in a more awful way, I'm misreading cues. It's like. This person is just doing their job. <laughs> this you know Trader I mean? Joe's person yeah. is just literally ringing me up. I was like, why do I feel like Chick-fil-A employees are so horny? I'm like, 
oh <laughs> my gosh. You know, like, yeah. No, it, that is such a great point. We are primed for these meet cutes. Like, yeah. I, I do remember, yeah, whatever errands I was on, like, those were, like, I wanted them to be, like, cute errands because they were just, like, potential moments for mm-hmm. big things to happen. 100%. I'm walking through TJ Maxx, you know, smelling candles. Like, I could meet the love <laughs> of my life right here. No, I have 100% gone to several, like, bars, essentially, looking cute, just hoping that the love of my life, he'd be there on business, okay? He'd just be going through town on business, and he's going to look up from his gin and tonic. Men are always on business, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always traveling for business. Uh-huh. And he's going to look up from, you know, his cocktail and just see this blonde on the other side of the counter. Yeah. And just, yes. He's going to be dying to know what I have to say, okay? And let me tell you, men do approach, but not the ones you <laughs> want to. Yes, 100%. Absolutely. And this brings me to one of my other points, which is that you will not be able to step outside of your door without getting hit on, Mm. which is I think is similar to what you were just saying that, yeah, you will be getting hit on nonstop. And like you'll have to just like, you know, fight people back, like literally set up partitions. Right. Right. That was not my experience at all. And I will say I also think that with the apps now, it's becoming less and less of people's experiences. I do not think men approach women like even 10% as no, much as they used to. I completely agree. Yeah, like when I when I was dating, when I lived in Los Angeles, I don't know that I ever got cold approached. Mm-hmm. It's almost by, like- and if, and if it was by somebody, it was like by, it was more weird than hot or flattering. Well, and I think this actually goes to another thing, which is that because sometimes when you get cold approached by a guy you're not into, it's almost kind of a little scary because you're like, I got to get out of this situation. Especially if they're really, like, really interested. Yeah. So I think that another thing that romantic comedies teach men is that if a woman says she's not into you, that means it's time to double down down. and stalk her more, okay? (laughs) And chase after her more. And as a woman, this this would actually be quite a scary experience. Like, even back to the notebook, you know, she's not interested. She's not interested. Okay, he's going to chase her down. Keep coming after her. Go to the Ferris wheel. See her coming through town. I mean, going to throw them off the Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think maybe for gays, it's less uh, daunting or like it feels less predatory. But I've gotten a few people's numbers just like in person. Yeah. Old, and it's thrilling. You've asked. Or you've I've got, asked. I've yeah. asked. Yeah. It is thrilling. Yeah. That yeah. is amazing. I. Uh, but you have to be careful. Like you don't want to ruin going to your favorite, you say, like protein smoothie place. Right. Because right. you've you know, got the number of the staff. And yeah. that, not that that's happened. Not that, yeah, that's just one example. <laughs> also, you have to be careful at weddings. I, I find it, it was weird. I got pretty wasted at a wedding and I got a straight person's number. But I also had to ask myself, why did he give it to me? <laughs> you know, like, I, just, I don't know. And maybe, you know, maybe we just thought would, you would be friends. Uh, yeah. Fellow Chiefs fan. I don't know. <laughs> I also think that weddings to me, I felt like I was going to meet somebody at a wedding. Mm-hmm. Like weddings felt like yeah. prime meet cute territory. I still think people do yeah 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 Yeah. okay so i think another thing rom-coms taught us that wasn't true another lie we were told and this is a little bit all-encompassing but it's that the perfect man exists yeah okay yep and i really really believed this when i was dating especially in my early 20s and i remember i went on a bachelorette trip and i was sharing a room with this other girl And, you know, we were both single. She's like, what? Or maybe she was dating someone. I forget. But I was single. And she was like, what are you looking for? And I was like, yeah, like, I'm looking for a guy who is, like, probably, like, early 40s, has, like, salty hair, like, salt and pepper hair, is kind of rugged, like, loves the earth, like, has, like, a connection to the land. I was like, I basically like a liberal cowboy. Like, I want a guy who, you know, is really thoughtful and really smart, has a great job. And anyway, she looked at me and she was like, yeah, I don't think that guy exists. (laughs) And it truly was the first time that it had occurred to me that I was looking for a fantasy. Yeah. 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 It's such a good point, Lauren, because when I think about the guy I'm going to be with, like, there's nothing about him that annoys me. Mm, Yes. And it makes me think of the movie Up in the Air, that scene with Anna Mm -hmm. Kendrick and uh, Vera Farmiga, where Anna Kendrick is describing the guy she wants to meet. And she's like, well... He probably went to Brown or Dartmouth, and he drives a Jeep Grand Cherokee, has a dog, and the lady's like, okay, uh uh-huh. And she's maybe 10, 15 years older than her, and she goes, what about you? What are you looking for? And she goes, I think a nice smile. You know what? (laughs) A nice smile might do. (laughs) Um, No, uh, you literally make a list in your mm -hmm. head Mm -hmm. of of what they look like, 
what they do for their, I mean, you play, you, you know, you play mash literally like yeah. everything about their life. And then it's just like, okay, now this person does exist. I just have to wait for them to approach me. Right. Yeah. And they will. Yeah. We yeah. did that in our early morning church seminary class one year. I think we were freshmen and our teacher, love her, had us make a list of the partner attributes we wanted mm-hmm. a partner. And my friend, Grant, he was being so funny, but his list was like, picked up the first strength of youth once or twice. <laughs> no abnormal birthmarks. <laughs> Smart shopper. Also, like, I, yeah. I love that it's picked it up once or twice. Maybe it doesn't have it memorized. Right, you know, the right. lines might be a little blurred for them because they've only picked it up once or twice. Yes. <laughs> um, you're a liberal cowboy type, though. Yeah. You That trickled down to me. It did. Yeah. It, it absolutely did. I taught you that the only men, like, worth having were, were basically was Dennis Quaid in the parent trap. Well, That's it. I yeah. feel like Chan found that in a way, though. Ben is so outdoorsy. Ben is outdoorsy. Ally. But, you know, honestly, like, I don't match his outdoorsiness, and that does create some friction. But, I, I mean, I literally thought, though, that, like, the only men worth giving your time were men who were, like, soil was just, like, seeping through past their hands yes. you know just on a daily basis they were just like tilling the earth I don't know all they need is you the land you know yeah what, what did I used to say I didn't want a man I would say this I want a man who just needs me the earth and his guitar <laughs> I was like well, 19 at this point I, you know I, I made Ben sell his guitar like when we moved in together <laughs> it's like you don't ever play it wait okay the other thing I think and maybe this is going to be controversial okay but the idea that you know it doesn't matter how different of worlds you come from mm-hmm. love will conquer all mm. like think about let's let's run the tape yeah okay if rose and jack had made it okay <laughs> <laughs> this bitch could get, barely get out of a car without assistance what do you think she's gonna be doing okay once they get to new york right and she was not gonna have the family money anymore no no sure ass was gonna be grass yes. okay you think she's gonna be happy huffing and puffing okay as a seamstress her mother's worst nightmare mm-hmm. The resentment was going to build. Uh, uh, she just Reach looked at her day and be like, why did I pick a loser? <laughs> <laughs> he would hate going to family Thanksgivings. Oh, like, no. Your family is so uppity. They always get upset when I vape in the foyer. <laughs> like. That is another great point. I mean, I think about that with Runaway Bride. Mm-hmm. Like, we're from two different worlds, but love conquers all. Right. And that's actually, like, such a p- big part of finding someone who you're compatible with is, like, can we make our two worlds work, right. you know? I want to get to a listener submission because I think this is a a very smart one. And it's basically the idea that we can fix broken or toxic people. Yeah. Like the character, whether it's the woman or the man, you know, or the man and the man, woman and the woman, uh, (laughs) we accept all. You're so fucking woke. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I don't know that I've ever seen like a lesbian rom-com, but that's on me. Anyway, (laughs) like one of the characters will be like bad news, but love fixes it. And that's just actually not the way it works. It's like, right. no, you got to figure your stuff out. You need to actually become a less toxic person. And then maybe you'll be like worthy of me. I was dating a guy. I met this guy when I lived at home after college. And he told me that his alter ego or like the, you know, who he would be in a movie was the guy in Californication. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I continued to date him. Okay. And even though there were a million red flags, he clearly like was screwing a lot of women at the same time. And he also would not text for a long time and text randomly. All the red flags. I was pretty hot for this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I think that you really have this idea in your head that like they will fall in love with me at some point and then they'll fix all their issues. Yes. Yes. You know? Yeah. This idea that they can be retrained, which yeah. stands yes. in direct contradiction to the book of Oprah, like chapter three, verse one. Yes, please. Which is something like, you know, when people tell you who they are or show you who they are, believe I them. I believe that was Maya Angelou. Another <laughs> wonderful Oprah. African-American woman. I think you're right. God um, bless. <laughs> but um, a perfect example of that, I think, is a Walk Tree member. Yes. Like Shane West is such a bad boy. He's so mean. And all he needed was to be in a school play with little Miss Christian Mandy Moore. And that was going to do it for him. Yeah. You know, make him realize what really mattered in life. But I've thought that sometimes, like sometimes when men are just like gruff or rude, but sensibly hot. Yeah. Like maybe they just need a little community theater and me, (laughs) you know, and and the Bible and (laughs) the Bible and the land. I think as well, this was kind of a, a cross some of our listener submissions, but this idea of the one and maybe even like a little bit of soulmates i don't do you guys all believe in soulmates i do not no i don't think i do either and i think that's the rom-com <laughs> that's so depressing <laughs> i well, believe there's a lot of people out there who could have beautiful happy lives with me they just have not found me. well and i think to me like and maybe this is really sad but i think the notion of soulmates is actually like a little bit 
depressing because it's like, well, what if something happens to you, the person sure. that you're with or like something, you know, it's just like, I think I prefer the idea that, yeah, like there's a lot of great people out there and it is really special when you do find someone who really you like can make it work with. Okay. Can I say something kind of nauseating? Yeah. And please. tell you a rom-com moment that actually came to life for me? Really? Please. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of dovetails around this okay. soulmate thing. One time I was talking to Kagan and I was like, I think what's really special about us is like we chose each other. And like, I think we, you know, have options. Yeah. Maybe it's a little egotistical. Apologies. And anyway, he goes, I couldn't get another girl like you. Oh, I know. So anyway, sweet. it's true. But an, a rom-com thing that has not happened for me and actually has made me feel a little bit like a failure in life. Okay. Is no one has ever run after me or chased after me at an airport. Oh. <gasps> You guys. Oh. Good luck having them come pick you up at an airport. <laughs> That's not happening. Yeah. Lauren, I've never felt worse about my Wait, relationship in my a, life. It's a little traumatic because you really do think inevitably at one point you'll break up with a guy, yep. it won't work out, or something will happen, yep. and he will run through the airport after you. Don't get on that plane. He'll jump through TSA. <laughs> Maybe he's got pre-check. I don't know, but... Yeah. Wow. I know. I can see the trauma coming over you. Is there as any you... way to get that, do that before my wedding? I, my, to be I fair, it's just so much more difficult in a post-9-11 world. It is. So Thanks, Joe Biden. Oh, <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Al-Qaeda. They ruined love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and being chased after in general. I Yeah, it's, it's very sad. Uh, when Seth chases Anna through the airport, okay, like... And are you talking about in the OC? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, the OC too. Well, I think this is a pretty apropos given, you know, the time that we're living in with nobody wants this. But did you watch the OC? I did not watch the OC, but okay. I said half nobody wants this and I'm loving it. Yeah. So yeah. I think Adam Brody is, and the Seth Cohen are just a total anomaly. And I yeah. definitely thought that like I was going to find my own Seth Cohen. Mm -hmm. I just don't think the Seth Cohens really exist. Well, the problem is, is that. Men are either written by, I think, gay men or women. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we need men written by straight men. Yes. Yeah. Because that, I mean, or do we though? Uh, Should we, we just do. let it's the called John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to date him. <laughs> it's like, yeah, literally like Avengers. Like I think with rom coms too, or like Grey's Anatomy, the idea that fucking someone in your workplace is like a good idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. Hot. It's not. It's not. Yeah. You just have to spend the summer pretending that like, this person who's really bad at PowerPoint, like you don't hate their guts and like you, that you haven't seen all of them. And, yes. Yeah. No, the interns start and they all start fucking their boss. And people are like, this is so romantic and hot. Whereas that would actually be like the biggest HR violation, <laughs> abuse of power. Yes. Yes. But it's pretty hot. <laughs> I don't actually feel like that happens very often anymore. Like, especially not, not in a, in a post COVID world. Like I just don't feel like there's as many workplace romances. Oh, there are. There yeah. are? Oh, yes. it's called delusion. Yeah. Blinders up. <laughs> to be fair, you're not in the office a ton. I'm not in the office yeah, a ton. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. People get really um, bored in the office. I'm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's where a lot of people meet their partners. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of third places anymore, like church. Third spaces, school, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is why yeah. I felt like TJ Maxx was going to be the, the you know, the place of my meet cute. Because that was my third that space. Shocking. It's just a lot of women. There? I don't know. I just feel like I was going to be in my element. And maybe the guy that I was romanticizing would shop at TJ Maxx. It was it was a gay man. A know? bargain hunter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, why would you want your fantasy man to be shopping at TJ Maxx? That's just the worst. He's like, I'm looking for a Max Anita. <laughs> <laughs> a guy knows where I can, you know, get a rug, a lamp, and a candle. All one, and some, like, random snacks. There's so much concerning about this fantasy. Okay, another rom-com from our time was a Cinderella story. Do you remember yeah. this? I think one thing that messed with me as an adolescent was just that like the most popular guy at school actually might have a thing for me. And that might one day come to fruition. I was not a hot popular girl in, in school. And so I think that I did always think that there was a chance that the hottest popular guy was into me. Yeah. The, the most popular guy in the town, he's one day just going to be in love. In with love you. with me. He's going to yeah. like see me. Mm -hmm. He never saw me. Yeah. And that, like he's nice and and hot. Like I feel like a lot of times the most popular guy in high school, like you didn't want to date. He's him a bully. Him home. Yes. Yeah. He's literally a a, a bully. And he's not going anywhere after high school. No. Yeah. And you said he didn't see you. I look at pictures of myself from high school and I'm like, he saw me. <laughs> he saw something he didn't like. <laughs> he saw. He fully saw me. <laughs> oh my he god. He saw me and that explains everything. <laughs> oh. Okay. This one's funny. Making us believe Hugh Grant is a nice guy. Not a nice guy. <laughs> I just think, too, he plays, like, I think a lot of times these men play just dickish characters. Mm -hmm. And that, but, you know, you just, like, peel back one layer and they're actually just, like, super emotionally available and wonderful to you. And that's not true. 
And uh, to that point, too, like that it would be nice and hot to date a British person. <laughs> I think I would want to drown myself in our like 10th argument because they would always sound so smart. Yeah. And so, true, yeah, true. everyone would take their side. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's well, kind of condescending, you know, when they speak. I mean, this is going to potentially get me in some hot water. But I will say that movies and films gave me a very different idea of British people. Um, and I thought they were all very put together, very sophisticated, very refined. Then I turned on Love Island <laughs> and I got a different picture of what yeah, the Brits fair. be like. Yeah, um, I, I love Love Island. It's it's pretty great. <laughs> love them, but they're not all just reading Jane Austen, you know, by a pond. OK, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Absolutely true. They actually just want to talk about if she's fit or not. Have a chat. <laughs> They're a bit of a chat. <laughs> Along British people and Hugh Grant, Notting Hill is another amazing rom-com. Oh, so good. And dead ass. Still, I think that like I could probably date a famous person or fall in love with like a, a famous person. Yeah. Or if yeah. not a famous person, like Meryl Streep's nephew. I think that would be like the perfect degree of totally a like like a couple degrees, like maybe one degree removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak more to that. Why do you think you'd be great at it? Well, first of all, I just have a, a genuine interest and appreciation for her filmography. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, Meryl Streep's. Meryl Streep yeah, in particular. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. And I just feel like I'd probably be a pleasure to have at Thanksgiving and be like, oh, I'm so glad my nephew found Joe. <laughs> I'm so grateful I found your house. I knew where it was. I just knew I was invited in. Um, Joe, any famous person's nephew would be lucky to have you. It's so true. Yeah. Sally Field we has a gay son. Well, we I met actually him. once. <laughs> I have. <laughs> yeah, we met we him. We met him. Yeah. yeah. Chandler maybe has a story to tell. Wait. Um, is this after Watch What Happens Live? Yes. That, oh he God. was a part of that clan. I really yeah. made Chandler feel cool during that meet cute. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because Lauren was like. <laughs> Lauren, First of all, we didn't yeah. talk about who his mom right, was. Right, right. But then, of course, I had a few drinks. Yeah. We, we were playing it very cool. And yeah. then we had a few drinks. Yeah. And then I'm walking across the street and I'm just like, has your mom told you anything about Daniel Day-Lewis? <laughs> Did not. I did. She did. And I about died. <laughs> I about died. And yeah, also that night was crazy because it was like, it was Maude Apatow mm -hmm. and uh, Lucas Gage, right? Lucas Gage. Lucas Gage also kissed me that oh. night. Oh, I know. Maude you know. Apatow came up to me in the bar and was like, just this cute high school girl being like, want a drink? It was just so, <laughs> that was the craziest night. Incredible. It was yeah. so fun. But, I um, met um, Jeremy O'Harris. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The anyway. Slave play. I mean, yes. Yeah. I don't know if this will mean anything to you guys, but I also think rom-coms created another arc, like archetype of a man that for me was the Daniel Day-Lewis archetype, which is like, he will be an obsessed artist. Like he will be obsessed with yeah. his art. You know, he'll be a painter. Yes. He'll be really mm -hmm. impressive. Mm -hmm. Be rich, of course, because he'll have some Manhattan loft. Right, right. You know, with unobstructed views of the square. And he will just also, you know, be obsessed with you. And it'll be so difficult, those competing passions. Right. Anyway, that's what that's where Daniel Day-Lewis fell in my mind. Yep, yep. You know? I think what you're getting to is that men have sexy hobbies. Yeah. And also, like, not they never sports. Sh they never show men scrolling on their phones. Oh, I'm like, sorry. Not or on Twitter, on their computer, like... Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say yeah. playing Halo. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like there's yeah. no like it's sailboat ride. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Writing totally. speeches for Rugby, yeah. lacrosse. La when he has a free moment, you know what? It's time for a crossword. Yes. Okay, with, a, with a pencil. <laughs> it's literally like, yeah, it's time for me to stave off like Alzheimer's by playing the crossword. <laughs> no, it's not happening. You're you're more lucky if the man plays Wordle. Ugh. I mean, that is a catch. Yeah. Don't let him go, ladies. Okay, so I another good one I think is each first kiss I had never magically had a perfect song playing in the background. <sighs> Trying to set the mood with the perfect song. Oh my gosh. Wait, this is... Perfect playlist. This actually brings back a memory from high school where I tried to create a rom-com moment Yeah, for me and my boyfriend at the time. Yeah. Basically, what I did was I put on a Death Cab for Cutie song. Uh -huh. Wait, this, I'm so embarrassed. I like asked him to go to the dance at high school where the girl asks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I forget how I asked him. It was like in a cute way, but at the end of it was the car was pulled over and I wanted to dance in the middle of the street to a dead cop for a cutie song. In the Dangerous. middle of our suburban hometown, <laughs> Orange County, California. Not some back roads in Hale, Maryland. And was he down or weirded out? Oh no, he was so weirded out. He was like, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> this ain't happening. And he gave it to me for like five seconds. And he was like, we're going to get run over. <laughs> like you're in the middle of like, like a six lane highway. Like, it was like, <laughs> I think I had a, a sign outside our house and then it was on like the street below. Wow. Yeah. It's okay. We all have been there. I mean, I'll share a memory from a from another time. Yeah. When, you know, I was 
seeing somebody and we were having romantic times. This person had ads with their Pandora stations. Mm. And I was like, this is really breaking the mood every time we get a Pandora ad. Can you just like, this person also could have afforded the $7 a month for Pandora. And let's just say some seminal romantic moments in my life were interrupted by Pandora ads. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Wait, that is hilarious. (laughs) Anyway. Okay, another one. Mm. So all of the men in the rom-coms, they have amazing, high-paying, high-powered jobs, all right? Yeah. But they never have to work late. They never have work come in the get in the way of love. They're never stressed out from their jobs. Also, it doesn't matter if like their jobs are our I'm back to Grey's Anatomy, okay, working at a hospital, working late nights. They're ripped, okay? They are extremely yeah. toned. It doesn't yeah. matter how stressful their jobs yeah. are. They look really good when those scrubs come off. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But yeah. it's like also not part of their lifestyle. Like you never see them drinking a protein shake right, in these right, movies. Or, right, Yeah. Intermittent fasting. What they eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or God forbid talking about it. Right, yes. right. Yeah. It's just all yeah. natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You guys, let's, you know, in spite of knowing how toxic even this exercise is, okay, and how misguided and foolish we could be right now, who from a rom-com or from, like, what fantasy guy is your top of all these guys? Is your top pick? I'm going to go with Seth Cohen in the OC. Ooh. Seth Cohen, I think, is just, yeah. It's a great pick. Exactly. Yeah. See, I don't think I would have a very fun life with this person. Okay. And I don't not? actually know that the everyday like, reality would be that great, but the fantasy is still so alive in my head. Okay. I'm so into like the cello obsessed Dr. Burke. Oh, very yeah. serious. Dr. Dr. Burke. Burke, who is so, you love the super <sighs> serious man. Yes. Who, yeah, plays the cello in his spare time. I want to think that like my man is like thinking about solving world hunger in the yeah. shower. Okay. He's yeah. just, he's looking at the sky. <laughs> <laughs> And thinking about very important things. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's yeah. a great pick. Doctor Burke is very hot, and I think as rewatching Grey's Anatomy in adulthood more, mm-hmm. I think Doctor Burke is way hotter to me. For like, I don't know, he's just like less of a dick than De- like I don't know. Patrick Dempsey is just like kind of the worst. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, also, I don't know how well Doctor Burke would handle this podcast, so everyone should uh- be very grateful <laughs> that he never materialized. Doctor Burke would never get you. <laughs> Never in a million years. You're not serious enough. Oh, that's my cross to bear. Yeah. Joe? I think Kevin Costner Ooh. from like Body maybe guard? the upside of anger or maybe like field of dreams. Wow. Just okay. Like a man that can grow a field if he wanted to. A man that is beautiful with his words that mm-hmm. will talk. He will take you to church with yep. his words. But <sighs> he knows when to stop talking. <laughs> that is a real problem with men today. It's like, I actually didn't want to know your thoughts on that or your theory on that. I know you teach this subject. You don't teach this one. My God. I mean, even when they do teach this subject, I once dated a guy with a master's in geology. Okay, let me just love you. Love you, Matt. But, you know, Name, we're naming names. We learned a lot about mountains, you know, in, the, yeah. in my time. And yeah. sometimes it can just go go a little long. Yeah. You know, 100 percent. Like, I love the mystery of the earth. I don't right. know how everything functions. I don't need to know how these were created, you know. Yeah. No, you know, I just want to say the rest is still unwritten for you in your your romantic life. Thank I you. think Joe like could very well end up with Kevin Costner. Yeah, and point. I just <laughs> hope your field of dreams is never engulfed in flames. Thank you, and I know all your listeners are wondering how do we date him. Please, yeah, they can't, but um, <laughs> it's mainly female many, many audience. Ma- male but... listeners can male listeners though can reach out. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and through the proper channels. For non-Swifties listening, I did not just say something super weird. You know, that's a, a lyric. Swift, I mean, for sure. I was listening to that song before <sighs> this episode. Um, I mean, Lommel. I think that one thing we need to say is that rom-coms are at fault, but also Taylor is somewhat at fault. See, I actually, that's so funny you, you say yeah. that because on the way here, I was thinking we should do another episode about how Taylor Swift saved us. So rom-coms ruined us, but Taylor mm, saved she, us. I think she, I think early Taylor set us up a little bit to fail. But I think she has ultimately saved us. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with her lyrics, but her relationships, no, because this relationship with Travis Kelsey, I'm like, that's not normal. <gasps> I don't know. They like the, the two stars like getting together. I just he feels too perfect. Like he's just like waiting on her every hand and foot and interesting. He, what are you she's saying, Joe? Like feeding him at the game. Yeah. It just like I just it just seems too idealistic. Where are you at right now with can we get your you mental health? Oh, <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. I still are you unmedicated? And, <laughs> and I, I, I love the two yeah. together, and I yeah. think it's end game. I just don't think it's realistic for all of us to find our Travis Kelsey. To, not all of us can have the alchemy. The dream girl. Lo- <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
feel so high school in their 30s. It's yeah. true. It's yeah. really true. Yeah. The dream girl gets the dream guy, though, you know, and that for me feels like cosmic justice. Oh, wow. Okay. I agree. Wow. This has been a gorgeous. A gorgeous episode. Yeah. I, I also just want to issue a statement to my beloved. I, I love you, Ben. I do feel like I have my own fairy tale. <laughs> I feel like I have to say that after uh, talking about everything I didn't get. <laughs> well, I'm not going to issue any disclaimers because I know Kagan's not listening. So. <laughs> you guys, oh, but man. I love our listeners and I, I love you guys. Do. And I do love my husband, dear Kagan. Honestly, this podcast is a dream. It is a dream. This podcast is the dream. And meeting Joe Peacock, another dream. So anyway, thank you everyone for listening. Joe, do you want to shout out your handles? Yeah, or, where, where can or we no? find you? Oh yeah, uh, you can find my gated Instagram profile <laughs> at that Joe Peacock and Joe Peacock on LinkedIn. One of your listeners added me last time. Stop. I and that. Strava, yeah. right? You're on Strava? Oh my gosh, yeah, I am on Strava. Add <laughs> me there. Uh, it's my favorite community, the community of athletes if you're unaware. <laughs> and I also love you, Ben Manning. I'm so grateful you found Chan. <laughs> um, love you, Ben. Also everyone, if you can't get enough of Joe like us, he has several other episodes in our catalog. So just search Joe Peacock and the other two are about Taylor, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyway, there's more where this came from. Absolutely. All right. Love you guys. And we'll be back on Friday on whatever premium feed you subscribe to. Okay. Love we love that. you. Premium listeners. Bye. Bye.